When I say the term artificial intelligence, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Is it sentient robots like Terminator or WALL-E? Or is it the auto tag feature on Facebook? Or perhaps it's the autopilot feature on Tesla? Or perhaps it's Siri on your iPhone? We'll get into what AI is in just a moment, but it's worth recognizing that AI surrounds you in places that you may not even recognize. Whether it be the computer you play against in video games, the mobile deposit feature on your banking app that allows you to deposit a check straight into your bank account by simply taking a picture or the chatbot that you're interacting with on your favorite e-commerce website. As the technology takes on a larger role in our lives, it's becoming increasingly important to understand the technology. Why? Because artificial intelligence is quickly expanding its influence on the world around us. It's making massive decisions that are shaping our lives. It's becoming incredibly good at predicting our behaviors and our interests, and in some ways in shaping our behaviors and interests, which is pretty scary when you think about it. In a lot of ways, AI is making your life better. For example, you're getting personalized recommendations that may actually interest you. You're able to benefit from AI-powered technologies like Alexa, Face ID, or even the filters on your Instagram or Snapchat. Eventually, you'll be able to reap the benefits of more sophisticated AI technologies, such as self-driving cars or completely walletless shopping. AI offers us the promise of a world with increased auto safety and decreased traffic complications, with reduced healthcare costs and improved patient outcomes. It'll eliminate countless tedious tasks that take up your valuable time, freeing you up to do more of what you love to do. On the flip side, AI also poses massive risks to our society. And I'm not talking about the existential threat of robots taking over the world. That may be an actual risk, but there are more immediate, more insidious risks at hand. We'll discuss these towards the end of this video. Over the next few minutes, we'll cover a few things. One, what is AI? Two, how does AI actually work? Number three, what are some different types of AI? And finally, number four, what risks does AI present? Now, we obviously can't cover all of AI in just a few minutes, but my hope is that you'll leave this video with a solid foundational understanding of what AI is, and hopefully it sets you up nicely if you're looking to continue on this journey to learn more about this fascinating technology. With all that being said, let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing we wanna talk about is what is AI? We wanna make it very clear what we're talking about when we say artificial intelligence. If you were to look up the definition of artificial intelligence on Britannica, you'd see something like this. AI is the ability of a computer to do things that normally require human intelligence. Now let's unpack this definition a little bit. First, what are we talking about when we say computers? We hear the term all the time, but let's be very specific. A computer is a hardware and software setup that's able to receive user input, process data, and create information for storage and output. These would include your smartphone, your laptop, or even your smartwatch. The next part of the definition states that artificial intelligence does things that normally require human intelligence. Now, what exactly does this mean? Well, to be honest with you, this is the trickiest and most ambiguous part of the definition. What is considered to be normally human intelligence can change over time. For example, in 1997, a computer that IBM had created to play chess named Deep Blue played the reigning world chess champion at the time, Garry Kasparov, and it won. Why was this so important? Because computers back then used something called brute force to compete with humans in chess. This meant that they would evaluate a massive amount of options for the best move to make each time they had to make a move. To explain how difficult it is to choose a successful move in chess, think about it this way. There are more possible moves in chess than there are planets, stars, or even atoms in the entire universe. In just 10 moves alone, there are 169 octillion different combinations that a chessboard may have. That's 169 with 27 zeros trailing after it. Using brute force to find the best move each time was incredibly inefficient and required massive, and I mean massive, computational power. A chess computer was never able to summon enough brute force to compete with the world chess champion until Deep Blue. And once Deep Blue accomplished this feat, it felt magical. For a lot of experts, this was a moment that artificial intelligence overtook human intelligence. But something funny started to happen. Once experts started to understand the underlying workings of Deep Blue and how the quote unquote AI that powered it actually worked, many no longer considered it to be true artificial intelligence. This wasn't artificial or real intelligence that demonstrated our own creative style of thinking and learning, but the application of simple rules on a grand scale. It's a bit like magic. If you knew exactly how a magician was performing their tricks, 
it probably wouldn't feel like magic anymore. It would feel more like extreme dexterity and illusion. In the same way, once someone understands the underlying mechanisms of artificial intelligence, sometimes it doesn't seem like artificial intelligence anymore, more like advanced statistics and probability. This makes the definition of what AI is very tricky to pinpoint. There's always gonna be disagreements about whether or not something is AI or not, and some experts in the space avoid using the term artificial intelligence entirely. The AI community decided that when experts disagreed about what is considered AI, AI, they were oftentimes talking about two separate things. On one hand, they were talking about AI that simulates human cognition and benefits mankind by automating time-consuming tasks and analyzing data in some ways that humans just can't. This is now referred to as narrow AI or weak AI. On the other hand, they were talking about an AI with the capacity for reasoning, emotion, and creativity that has the ability to do just about anything that a human can do and better. This is what we refer to as general AI or strong AI. So in other words, narrow AI or weak AI is AI that's programmed to perform a specific task, whether that's recognizing objects in a photo, checking the weather, or playing chess like Deep Blue. General AI or strong AI is usually what we see in movies like Ex Machina or Terminator or Her or WALL-E. It's defined as AI that can successfully perform any intellectual task that a human can. This means that AGI has the ability to reason, solve problems, plan, learn, and do anything that a human can do. This may also mean that these machines have what we consider to be a conscience. Thankfully, we haven't seen anything like this yeah. Having the distinction between what is considered weak AI and strong AI remedies some of the debate around whether something is AI or not. But it definitely doesn't eliminate it. There's a strong chance that experts will continue to disagree forever. Now that we know what AI is, let's talk about how AI actually works. So AI comes in many shapes and sizes, too many to cover in just this one YouTube video. So for the sake of brevity, we're going to learn more about only one subset of AI. The good news is that this is by far the largest subset of AI, so you're learning a good one. I'm talking about machine learning. Machine learning is a computer algorithm or set of rules that improves automatically through experience. But you may be wondering, how does an algorithm experience anything? When we refer to experiences here, we're talking specifically about observations of data. Data can be anything. It can be a picture, a video, a soundbite, text, you name it. Machine learning takes these pieces of data, converts them into a format that computers can understand, which is usually a bunch of numbers, and then it uses a process of trial and error to learn how to solve a specific problem without being explicitly programmed. Notice I said trial and error. If you're using trial and error, you have to know when you made an error or not. The trick here is that machine learning is what we call a supervised algorithm. This means that we need to have a label attached to each piece of data we train it on. So it's able to tell whether it was right or whether it was wrong. For example, if we wanted to create a machine learning algorithm for classifying whether a picture contains a cat or a tiger, we would feed it as many relevant data points as possible. So in this case, information on each picture of a cat or a tiger, and labels that tell us whether a given picture includes a cat or a tiger. When the machine learning algorithm is being trained, it'll first look at each data point one by one. Second, use its logic to guess whether it's a tiger or a cat. And finally, once it makes a guess, it'll immediately know whether it's right or wrong. So depending on whether it's right or wrong, it's gonna make adjustments to his logic with the goal of being right more often. It'll repeat these steps over and over again, multiple times on each picture, and it'll continue to improve. Once it does this enough times, its logic will be so sound that it'll be able to take any new set of data inputs on a picture of a cat or a tiger and tell you exactly which animal is in the picture. Now, this may seem like a very simple example, but if you understand it well enough, you're well on your way to understanding how most applications of AI actually work. Now that we've learned the basics of machine learning, let's talk about some different types of AI. Now, machine learning is only one subset of AI. There are other more specific types of AI. These include deep learning, 
which is a subset of machine learning, but it can handle much more complex logic and it can also handle unstructured data, which we'll discuss in just a moment. If we wanna learn an example of deep learning, we can revisit our cat and tiger example. When we were using plain machine learning to determine whether something was a tiger or not, we were manually feeding the algorithm data points, whether or not the animal had stripes, whether it had pointed ears, the approximate size of the animal. Deep learning would allow you to train the algorithm on the images themselves. No need to manually input the features from the pictures. With deep learning, the algorithm will examine the digits that make up the digital image and develop an understanding of what determines whether something is a tiger or a cat. Another subset of machine learning is reinforcement learning. This is a type of AI that's designed to maximize rewards in an effort to learn how to solve problems. It too, like machine learning, learns from a process of trial and error. However, the difference between them is that deep learning is learning from data that you provided and then applying that learning to a new data set while reinforcement learning is dynamically learning by adjusting actions based on continuous feedback to maximize a reward. This means that you would use reinforcement learning when you don't have training examples for the algorithm to learn from, but you do have clear rewards and punishments that you can set for it. For example, in the case of Mario, the reward is progress in the video game and the punishment is death. Reinforcement learning has been used to make computers vastly superior to humans like you or me when it comes to playing video games. Okay, so now that we've learned what AI is, how AI learns, and some different types of AI, let's discuss something very important, and that is what are some risks that AI presents. AI can do a host of marvelous things like improved transportation, healthcare, scientific research, or it can be used to do some terrible things like feeding mass surveillance, online phishing attacks, and the spread of fake news. It can also be used by bad actors to create malicious byproducts of technology like political manipulation bots. It can be used to manipulate people in masses through the use of deep fake videos, which make it very easy to put somebody's face on somebody else's body, or viral political smear campaigns. I truly, truly believe that everyone should learn more about AI. The more you understand about AI, the more prepared you'll be for the future of the technology. And also the more engaged you'll be in the civil discourse about the technology. Because AI learns based on the data that we train it on, it has the potential to perpetuate and reinforce the biases in that data. And that data that it usually learns from is inherently biased. I hope by now you understand that AI has the potential for tremendous good and tremendous bad. And it's very difficult to figure out exactly which direction the industry is gonna head in. But I'm confident that the more people understand about AI, the more diverse the community of people that are involved in shaping the future of AI, the more likely we are to be headed in a direction that's suitable for all of us, not just the majority population. So thank you for learning about this fascinating technology and please feel free to share it with anyone else that you think might be interested. If this video got you interested and you wanna learn more, check out our nonprofit, AI for Anyone. Our organization is focused on improving AI literacy. So we wanna help you learn about AI and we do this by offering a bunch of free resources that you can use to learn AI. If you have any questions or suggestions for this YouTube channel, please do let me know in the comments section below or tweet at me at Haroon Chaudhry. I make sure to look at every single tweet. I've also linked everything you need in the description below. If there's anything I'm missing, just let me know on Twitter or in the comments. All right, well, that does it for our very first AI for Anyone YouTube video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I look forward to seeing you next time.